Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Cookies in Canvas for Kids. Okay, so today we are painting a peekaboo parrot, and I'm gonna be eating these delicious Sequio de Coco cookies, which are popular coconut cookies in South America. And there is a reason why I'm painting this image today, which I'm excited to share with you. So you may remember the other week I did A Llama's Life, which was a painting that was inspired by my trip to South America where I met llamas for the first time. So when I was looking through my photographs of that trip, I came across some other pictures that I took when I was in the rainforest. So this painting is inspired by one of the pictures I took while I was in the rainforest, and I thought it would be fun to try another type of traditional cookie popular to South America. So let's paint our canvas and eat our cookies. Okay, so what we're using for materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. You can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, Mars black, fire red, cobalt blue, chrome yellow, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, and this is green oxide. And again, you can switch up those colors if you want to, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a number two pencil, and I have three brushes, if I can get them in order here. I have a half inch wide bristle brush, I have a number 10 round brush, and I have a number two round brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And if you're painting along with me, you're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I have some additional resources available for you below the video. So if you scroll down below the video, you can find a link where you could purchase this entire paint kit, the same materials, same colors, same brushes that I'm using. It's affordable and convenient, so that's there, down there for you. What's also there is a free downloadable image of the final painting, so you could click that link and just print out a picture of the final painting and you can use that as a visual reference as you go through the painting process. There's also written step-by-step -step instructions for you to use as well. But the most important thing that I have down below is a recipe for my delicious Sequoia de, de Coco cookies. I know, I can't pronounce it very well, but they taste really great. So that's all we're gonna need today. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are drawing a sketch of our parrot, but it's just gonna be a basic outline. So we're not gonna go into any real detail. I'm gonna give you a couple of markers. We're gonna be using our pencil. I'll give you a couple of markers and show you how to connect them. And by the time we're done, we'll have the makings of a outline for our parrot. So how we're gonna start this is we're gonna start with the big wing on the, that's gonna take up the majority of the area of the parrot. So what I want you to do is kind of eyeball about a halfway point on the top of your canvas, so somewhere about here. And you're gonna come down what I'm gonna call a quarter of the way down your canvas. And in order to figure out where that is, you can eyeball where the halfway point is from top to bottom. So I say mine's about here. And then you're gonna go half the distance between this finger and this finger. So I'm gonna call mine about here, and you'll make yourself a mark. So it, I'm just putting you in the ballpark. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, and then on the, the, the pointy part of the tail, the end part of the tail, we're gonna come in from the left-hand side, maybe about two inches. So maybe one, an inch and a half to two inches. And you're gonna come up maybe about four inches or about uh, a, another quarter or a third of the way. So somewhere around there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect these two marks with almost a big sideways like teardrop kind of shape. So I'm gonna start up, up here and I'm just gonna kind of do an arcing motion but I don't want that to come as far over into my canvas as this. I want it to come about half the distance between here and here in that, that direction. And I'm gonna come sloping down like this 
and then I'll give it a little bit of a kick out uh, at the edge of it. And then what I'm gonna do on the right side is I'm gonna make myself another kind of sweeping round area and then it's gonna come back into here. So I don't wanna to go too, too far over here. So I just need it to come over maybe about another inch or so. So here I go, I'm gonna make myself another sweeping kind of curve and then it's gonna come down and meet my other area. So it looks like kind of a sideways teardrop. And you can certainly reshape it if you feel like it should be a little bit wider or more narrow, feel free to reshape it if you have to. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a circle for the head and my circle for the head is going to come out a little bit farther, farther than the front of the body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel straight up from the front of the body and come up about, you know, maybe an inch or so higher than the, um, than the neck and make go out a little bit to the right and make myself a little bit of a mark. I want the top of my head to be about half the distance between the top of my wing and the top of my canvas. So you can really just go from this center point and go straight up and go about half that distance. And that's gonna be kind of the making of your circle. So I'm gonna just kind of do this and it can just be touching your, um, your wing part. So I've got myself a circle and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the back of the circle to the wing. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna kind of come straight down like this and just make myself a little arcing motion right in through there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a big beak. So I'm gonna come about, I'd say about a third of the way down this part of the circle to maybe about here. And then I'm gonna make myself a big hook that's gonna come past my neck. So I'm gonna go over like this, a big hook that curves back into the body. You don't want it to touch the body and it is below the bottom of your circle. And then I'm gonna come about right to about here and then make the rest of that part of the beak. And then what I do is I'm gonna take it from the neck and I'm gonna give myself a curved line to about halfway point on that beak, something like that. And then I need to give my, my bird a, a big um, poofy part on its forehead. I don't know what it's technically called, but it's a poofy part on the forehead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come from the part where it meets the beak and the head, and I'm just gonna bring this up like this, and then just kind of a little bit of a bump in through there. And then before we go away, I want you to erase a couple of marks. You don't have to erase it 100%, but it'll make your painting process a little bit easier. So I'm gonna erase this line right here, this line right here. Those are the two, um, well, you, I guess you could erase this one too. They're not necessary, but it'll make your painting a little bit easier. You could even do this one here, but it's not really necessary. And then we're gonna be using our big brush for the next step. So after you get your outline all nice and done, oh wait, we, we forgot the tail and the leg. <laughs> Let's do the tail and the leg real quick. He needs two other pieces to his body. I was so excited to get painting. So I'm just gonna come up this tail a little bit, or up the little point to point, maybe about an inch. I'm gonna make myself kind of a diagonal line, go up about another inch, make yourself another diagonal line. It comes in just a little bit here. Then I'm gonna go away from here, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch, make myself maybe a little line just like this and like this and then just close it off that's it now we can start painting put this pencil away get out your big brush take a bite of your cookie and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we are painting the first layer of our jungle rainforest. So I'm gonna be using green and black on my big brush. I'm gonna be applying it with a circular motion and I'm gonna keep alternating colors from green to black without washing my brush. So that way I will have some lighter spots and some darker spots. The only time that I am gonna ever concentrate on what color goes where is I want to just use green around this one area here. So I'm gonna start there with just green on my brush and I'm just gonna go really kind of close underneath 
here with the corner of my brush because I want to make sure this beak and the bottom part of the um, face stand out. So as soon as I get that on there, I'm gonna pick up green and black and I'm just gonna start having fun. I want this to be nice and dark and mysterious. This is where all the creatures in the rainforest go and hide out and they, you know, make all kinds of noises and have fun. So we definitely want this to be really nice and dark so we can have um, the canopy of all of the vegetation, give it its, its place where it lives. And the jungle, I, we're doing it nice and dark because the jungle has so much vegetation that you don't often see the sky and it's usually pretty dark because there's so many big trees and they're just always overlapping each other and they kind of block out a lot of the sun. So that's why you, a lot of the photographs that you see of areas where there is rainforests or jungles, which I think might kind of be the same thing. So I'm just, I keep kind of um, switching from one color to the other. I'm just using a messy kind of circular brush stroke so that way I can have some light spots and some dark spots throughout this. And we're gonna be putting um, a whole bunch of plants and stuff on top of this later. So don't worry if your area isn't painted 100% or isn't fully um, soft looking, you can certainly have areas where you see your brush strokes, that's totally fine. And you can use a lot of paint too. The more paint you use, the darker it's gonna be. Um, the less paint you use, the lighter sections you'll, you'll come up with. So whatever way you want it to, to look is totally fine. And again, I, I just keep alternating colors. One time I pick up black, the next time I pick up green, and that way I'm gonna have these excellent different shades of this darkness within my jungle. I can't wait for us to put all of our little creatures hiding out behind these plants and stuff. And I've almost just got this area over here on the left and you might be going faster than me. You might be taking your time like I am. I just wanna make sure that I get the whole area covered in. It is a big, huge area. So I'm just imagining this to be a awesome summer summer day with all of the life and these birds they're all singing and and enjoying the the warm temperatures that you'll usually find in a rainforest and i just can continue over here with some nice green and black and making sure it's nice and dark and that i've got the entire area covered in this is one little area back here left to go and if you want to you can paint the edges or the side of your canvas. That way when you go to hang up this beautiful masterpiece, you won't feel the need to put a frame around it. And I'm just going a little bit slower as I go around my tail and my wing. And then I've just got this tiny little area. And we're gonna be switching brushes to our small brush. So after you get your background done, you're gonna put this large brush away in your water cup and you can take out your small brush and then you can just get ready. Oh, maybe take a, a bite of your, your snack. And then I just make sure I've got all of these areas done. I think I do. I think I do. I think I do. And now I'm going to get ready for my next step. Okie dokie. So what we're going to do now is we are doing the first layer of the facial section. Um, I'm going to use my small brush and I'm going to be using black and gray. You don't have gray on your palette, but I'm gonna show you how to make gray. So first, we're, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little bit of black on our brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a curved line from where my forehead meets my beak all the way to my pencil mark of the beak and down below. So here I go. I'm gonna kinda of go, uh, see if I can keep my hand out of the way. So I'm gonna kinda of go up a little bit. I'm gonna curve it like this and I'm gonna meet it where my pencil mark is, and then I'm just gonna bring it down to the bottom of there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another mark, which is gonna be kind of where the neck meets the, um, meets the wing right in through here. 
So that mark, I'm gonna make this into, it's kind of like a wavy line. This is the bottom part of the beak where the, like the neck, is, I don't even know what it is, the bottom part of the face. I'm not sure what the real technical term is. So what I'm gonna do is I kind of bring it up like this and then it kind of curves in like this. It's a little bit of a section here. And then I'm gonna put a little bumpy part up here just to make it so it's not such a straight line. And then I'm gonna color in this whole section black. So the section between the beak and that weird lumpy line that we just made, I'm sure that's the technical term of it, the lumpy line. And then I'm just gonna color in this part, just black. You wanna make sure you go all the way to your um, green area. And then I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna create myself a gray color. So how I'm gonna do that is I have my dirty brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and I'm just gonna separate it, bring it over into another section and add a little bit of, uh, my brush already had black on it. So I'm just gonna make myself like a medium gray color. It doesn't have to be too dark or too light, just kind of middle of the road gray. I want this, this is gonna be the base coat for the beak as well as um, the eye part that we're gonna be putting on. So again, I'm just making myself a little bit of a medium gray. And then what I'm gonna do with that color is I'm going to create a big area in through here, which is gonna be where, the, where we're gonna put the eye later. So I'm gonna come a little bit down where this black area is to about here. And I'm gonna make a big swooping. It's gonna go up first, and then it's gonna come around and it's gonna meet this part down here of the black area. And then I'm just gonna color it in gray. I'm gonna color that gray, and it's okay if you bump into your black a little bit, no big deal. We will certainly modify that if you need to. I'm gonna color that area gray as well as my beak. And I'm not doing any special brush stroke. Your gray will cover in, color it in really nice, but if you have some light areas and some dark areas, that's just gonna make it look more natural, so don't worry about it. And then I'm gonna color that beak gray as well. So this is gonna provide us with an excellent base coat for the beak where we'll be able to add a nice highlight to it. I think before I end this step, I'm gonna make my make that black line in between, make that come back a little bit. I painted a little bit too much over it, but that's okay. You might do the same. Sometimes we paint outside the lines by accident, which is totally fine. And I'm just gonna get this all to the end of my beak and then I'm gonna just put a touch of black paint back on my brush to make sure I have a little black line in between here so you can see the difference between the beak and this other part. And then we are gonna switch brushes to our medium brush. So once you get that step done, you can put your small brush away in your water cup, take a bite of your cookie and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we are painting the red areas of our bird. So um, I'm choosing to paint this really, really colorful macaw parrot, um, but there's all different kinds of parrots. Even this type of parrot, the macaw, comes in different colors, but I'm doing the rainbow kind of colored one. There's different, there's cockatiels and cockatoos and cockatails and all kinds of caca parrots, but <laughs> we're gonna do the macaw. And I'm just really excited because the colors are so vibrant. So I'm gonna start with, I'm, we're using our medium brush and I'm gonna be using red and brown as my colors. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in these two sections, which is gonna be my tail and my leg. And I'm gonna use red and brown at the same time. So this way it's gonna end up looking like there's little highlights and shadows without us really having to do anything. So I'm gonna pick up some red and some brown. I don't pick up a lot of brown and sometimes you can pick up more or less. And I'm just going to be adding these stripes into the tail. So you can see I've got some light spots and some dark spots just because I used a little bit of brown on my brush. And this is gonna make it look really nice and natural. And I'm gonna go right up to my pencil mark and I'm just bringing down these stripes. And I don't over blend it because I want it to show that there's these different colors in it. 
when you go to do the leg it's not really feather-esque so you could just kind of do some little dots or just kind of paint it in this is the leg so it's more of like fur on the leg as opposed to feathers so I'm just gonna get that painted in and some of the legs are brown some of them are red again it all depends on what type of bird you decide to paint and then I'm going to do the same dotting up in the head but I'm going to start with I didn't wash my brush but I picked up more brown I'm going to put that right at the bottom of the neck where it meets this wing and you'll see why in a minute because we want it to really um, we want the wing to pop out so I'm just dotting all throughout the head I'm gonna dot this brown and red. And when you get up to the gray part, if you bump into the gray part a little bit, that's okay. That's gonna make it look even fluffier as it is right near the eye part. And the top of the head is definitely little feathers, but it's more, it looks more like fur because it's really short and soft. Um, and I'm gonna go all the way up to the top make sure I get this whole area painted in and then I'm going to go right into where that black part is and into the gray part and if you bump into a little bit don't worry about it I just bumped into mine a little bit I'm totally not worried and then when I go to do the feather part because we have a big red part on our feathers what I'm going to do I'm reloading my brush with red and brown what I'm going to have you do is you're going to come down the chest just a little bit past where your beak is you're going to make a mark and then you're going to come down almost halfway down that big back and make yourself a mark. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make this swishy kind of paint stroke that comes down and back up like this. So that's going to be the edge of your feathers. And then what you do is you're just going to paint the whole thing in with these down and out kind of curved marks. And I, when I reload my brush, maybe one time I pick up more brown, maybe one time I pick up more red. What I want to do though, it's okay if you come outside the bird over here too. That's going to make it look a little bit fluffy. When I get to that top, I want to use more red. So that way you can see the difference between the wing and the, um, the neck part. And then I'm just going to keep going until I have this whole section covered in with these beautiful feathers and again because we're using red and brown you're going to be able to see the separation of these feathers and it ends up looking really nice and realistic and you do want to paint the whole area in so if you've got some little white spots just kind of go back and and hit them with a little bit of paint and then when you're all set with your red section we're going to use this same brush for the next step but you're going to want to wash it and dry it so I think I've got mine all painted in here, so I'm going to wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to be doing now is we are going to be painting the yellow feathers. I'm using my medium brush um, and I'm, I'm doing the rainbow pair. This is what this catches my eyes the most. When I was in the Amazon, they we went on this super cool boat ride and there was hundreds, maybe thousands of parrots, the parakeets and the macaws and all different kinds. And they were on this really cool cliff and they were just all flying around. But these are the ones that caught my eye the most. So I totally wanted to paint it. So here we go. I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using a yellow and white paint on my brush at the same time. So this is going to be a similar section um, with this curve as the red section only I know that I really want to still have a big blue area below this so I don't want to take up too much room and if I bump into my red which I'm intending to do and it's still wet and I end up with orange feathers that's okay because the colors of the rainbow go red orange yellow green blue purple and if you were to look at one of these birds up close as the, the big yellow section meets the red section, there is little orange feathers. And as the yellow section meets the blue section, there is little tiny green feathers. So it's super cool if you get up close to one of these and really inspect those feathers. It's just like a rainbow, it's so awesome. So again, I have yellow and white on my brush. I'm gonna start over here. I want it to kind of poof out this little chest part a little bit. 
and then I'm going to use that same brush stroke that's kind of like down and out. And if you need your brain to not go past this area, just do the outside of it first and then work your way into the red area. And that way you'll have, um, your brain won't go too far down into the blue area. And I am going to overlap my red just a little bit so that way it looks like the feathers are kind of merging together and if you wanted to you could go back into the red and put little red ones on top it's totally up to you um, and then we are going to use the same brush for the next step but you're going to want to wash it and dry it in between and take a bite of your cookie <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is I'm doing my blue section of feathers. I am using my medium brush and I'm using mostly blue, but if I want to, I can also use a little bit of red down at the bottom so it would turn a little bit purple. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of white so you can see um, little flicks of the ends of the feathers. And just know if you still have wet yellow and you bump into it and you make some green, that's okay. That's going to make it look even more natural. So I'm just going to start with blue on my brush just to get the party started and to get this whole area colored in. Oh, look, look at there. I'm at starting with a little bit of green right where those two are meeting. I dig it. That's totally what I wanted to happen. My um, paint was, a my yellow was still a little bit wet and I was hoping for that because that's what's gonna make this look the most natural. So I'm just kind of feathering in my little blue feathers as they meet the yellow area. And you can see I'm not blending too, too much. This is gonna get a, give it a really natural look. And then I just wanna get a little bit going up this front and I'm gonna go all the way down on these edges. I haven't picked up white yet. I kind of want to get the majority of the blue on before I start using white. I might even get a little bit of, I might use a little bit of red down at the bottom too. But if I use white too early, what might happen is it all might turn too light on me. Um, so I really want to get this vibrant blue or too dull of a color. So I really want to get this vibrant blue on here before I start adding the white. So I've got it pretty well in position. I'm gonna add just a teeny tiny bit of red onto my brush. Maybe I'll get a little bit of purple going on down here. And now I'm gonna pick up blue and white. And this is gonna help me to get these little um, feather edges to it. And I can even puff them out over here on the end. And you can make yours as bright or as dark as you want to. Totally up to you. And I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of making sure it's got a nice rounded edge to it so he looks nice and full and he's got lots of feathers to him and then let's see what are we going to do for the next step we're going to use this same brush for the next step so once you've got all of your feathers in place you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are putting our plants in our jungle. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush. Um, I'm gonna be doing one kind of plant, but you could certainly do whatever kind you want. There's elephant leaf, weird tropical plants, there's pointy ones, there's round ones, there's all different kinds. You can do whatever you want. It's in the jungle, it's in the rainforest, they have, it's as many kinds of plants as you can imagine they have in the in the rainforest. So I'm just gonna do one that's got some long pointy leaves to it. Um, you can think of this almost like a fan that the leaves are gonna come kind of like out like this and just kind of spread out from one spot. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are green, yellow, and white. And you can use them as bright or as dark as you want. And if you make it too bright, you can always come back and add a little bit of black to it. And when I'm doing this, I am going to be keeping into consideration that I am going to have some little creatures that are going to be popping their heads out into my, um, or popping their eyes out from the dark little spots in my um, background. So I don't want to cover the whole thing with plants. I want to make sure that I have a couple of spots that I leave where I'm going to have my, um, my little mysterious jungle eyes poking through. So here we go. I'm going to put green and yellow on my brush. That's how I'm gonna start. And maybe I start back here and I just 
am doing these really fun kind of just they almost look like fans um they come out from like one spot maybe i've got one coming out over here you can have some light you can have some dark i'm gonna have a big one coming over in through here it will get darker as it dries so just know that if it looks a little bit bright as you when it's wet it will get darker as it dries and it's okay if you have ones that overlap each other it's okay if every now and again you're not doing that systematic um formation of the leaves you can almost do ones that just kind of look like grass here and there just to fill in the space um, again they can overlap one another i am going to be using a little bit of white from time to time but i'm not going to use a lot of white because i really want this to just read as it is dark in the jungle and if you want again you can use a little bit of black on your brush but now that i've got a couple in place now i'm just going to kind of go and fill in any spots where i think might just need a couple more pieces of something so if you've got areas where you don't think are painted fully you can certainly just add a couple of streaks of leaves coming through and again you can make them as fun as you want them to be. I think I'm gonna have a couple coming down here, but you can see right now, I'm just kind of doing it a little bit more chaotic than I did those first couple. I do want a couple of really nice bright ones that you can really see have that, you know, bright, maybe sun is peeking through some of those, um, some of the pieces of the canopy up top. And then we are going to switch brushes to our small brush. So once you've got all of these beautiful plants within your jungle and you've got um, areas where you can keep your little, you know, your little eyes are gonna be popping out. That's, we're going to be moving on with the um, next little small brush i think i've got enough up and through here and over here and everywhere i've got spots for my eyes to come popping through and again we'll be switching brushes to the small brush for the next step all right so what we're going to be doing is we are finishing the face and the head so the colors that I'm going to be using are black and white and I'm also going to use a little bit of red and yellow too so we're going to start with just a little bit of white and we're going to put a couple of areas in place here so I'm using my small brush and I'm putting just a little bit of white on my brush and I want to put the mouth into place because I know that parrots need mouths <laughs> they need them especially to eat um but some of them even use them to talk so i'm not sure if this one has learned how to talk yet but i'm gonna imagine perhaps it has so my mouth actually um starts in the grayish area and ends up right underneath the beak so about halfway between like here and here is where it ends up so what i'm gonna do is i've got a little bit of white on my brush and I'm gonna, and it's not a really straight line. So if you, if your hand wiggles like mine does, don't worry about it. It can, it's all right if it wiggles a little bit. So I've got it right about here, and then I'm gonna bring it down in through here, and then it comes somewhere right about there. And then I'm gonna put. I'm not washing my brush. I'm putting a little bit of black on my brush, and then I'm gonna get it to just kind of blend in a little bit of gray underneath here. That's gonna give it a really almost three-dimensional look. So you can keep some of that black underneath there, but if you put a little bit of gray in the middle, that's gonna make it look three-dimensional. You could even put a little bit of gray around here, maybe pop in a tiny black nostril if you need to, because I think the nostrils are um, behind the beak part. I don't think they're on the beak. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of black paint on my brush and I'm going to create where my eye is going to go. So my eye goes up in this area. I'm going to create um, a black circle and then a, a little ball in the middle of it. So my circle is going to be really pretty small. Um, and if your line ends up being too thick don't worry about it because you can 
um, thin it out with a few with um, like gray or something. But it's kind of the size of a pea. And then I'm going to put a um, another black. This is going to be the pupil in through here. But I don't have it touching the black um, outline. So something like that. And then I'm going to wash my brush, wash it and dry it. And I'm going to pick up some white. And what I'm going to do with that white is I'm going to start to add wrinkles around the eye and like little feathers in the, I don't know if they're wrinkles or feathers. You can determine what they are, but they kind of are in the formation of wrinkles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some around the eye and I'm not coloring in all the gray. I am just making these little marks as if they're like wrinkles. Oops, I got blue on my brush, I just noticed. Let me wipe that off. Um, so I'm also going to make it so it's not such a straight line going into the red. And then I'm just gonna kind of make these little lines in the face, circles around the eyes. And then when you get down in through here, it's almost just, these little like diagonal wiggly lines. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. Just think of them as little wrinkles or feathers or something. I do want to make it nice and bright up top above that eye so you can really tell that there's a, like a highlighted part. And then I'm going to make a little twinkle in the eye, which is just going to be one little dot. And I usually, I'm going to do it kind of in the upper right hand corner. So something like that. And then if you feel like you need any more white around the edges, just feel free to just kind of pop it on there. Doesn't have to be anything perfect. You're just get, giving the illusion that there's some wrinkles or you know something around there. And then I'm gonna put a highlight on my beak. So I just put white on my brush. I'm gonna put a nice thick area of white right at the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of move this white down in kind of the center of the beak. And I'm just going to kind of blend it out so it's the brightest down that center of the beak at the top and at the, cent and at the center. So that's going to make it look like it's three dimensional. So I've got it bright white up at the top. And then I, I brought kind of a diagonal line down here. And then I just use my brush to blend it out so it stays gray on the outer sides and it's light on the top. And then these, these particular parrots have a dark, like a black area at the bottom of their beak. So I just put a little bit of black paint on my brush. I'm going to do a little black area at the bottom of their beak. And then we have one last thing to do to finish up this head. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put red, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm putting a highlight on the top of my head. So I'm gonna do this with some dots at the top of my head. So this is gonna make it look, even though we're in the deep dark forest, this is gonna make it look like there is some kind of sunshine just maybe peeking through that canopy, highlighting the top of your bird, giving it a little bit of, you know, dimension so it looks three-dimensional. And then if you want, you can just kind of tap it and blend it into the rest. And then we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your parrot's face all nice and finished, you can put your small brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting a branch because we don't want our bird to look like he's levitating in the jungle. So we want him to be sitting or standing on something. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are black, brown, and white. Um, and you do wanna make sure that your canvas is dry before you start the step. So if you have any wet leaves left, you can either take a break and eat some more cookies or you can blow it with a blow dryer. Um, so I need this branch to be thick enough so it holds up this big bird. So you want to make sure it's nice and thick. And um, when I do my branches, I'm not concerned about them looking perfect because there is no such thing as a perfect branch. They're all bent and bumpy and all kinds of stuff. So when you're doing this, don't worry about having a perfectly straight line. Kind of the messier it is, the better. 
The only thing that I'm going to really try to do is have it thicker at this side and thinner as it comes out on the other side of my bird. And I need it placed just perfectly at the bottom of the leg. So I'm going to kind of start at the bottom of the leg and work my way from there. So I'm putting brown and black on my brush to start. And I'm going to start somewhere in here, right at my base of my body. I'm going to put it right to the bottom of my, of my leg. And then I'm just going to kind of wiggle it down. And then as I get towards this base, the back end of it, I'm going to make it bigger. So I'm making it a little bit wider. And then maybe I'll have part of a branch, you know, sticking out over here. I'll put the white on in a minute, but I want to get the whole branch in place before I start putting white because it might turn out a little bit too gray on me if I do that. So I'm putting some little branches coming off of here. I'm going to have some coming off the other side behind my beautiful bird here. So again, you can have these as whatever way works for you. If you want them really huge, then feel free to do so. If you want it to have more pieces branching off, feel free to do so. Um, but I think that's going to be a good shape for me. And now I'm just going to touch my brush a little bit in the white and I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight on the top of my branches. So I'm just going to take my brush and just kind of wiggle it a little bit and get there to be, so one, so you can see the branch. You could use yellow, you could use red if you wanted it to be a little bit different of a color. But you can see how just putting this little bit of white on the top and then just um, wiggling it in a little bit, that's going to make it look nice and natural like you've got some, you know, lighter pieces of bark on there and it gives it some dimension and some life in it. And I don't over blend it. I'm just kind of getting that color on there so you can see it, but I'm not um, overdoing it at all. And I suppose you could use your small brush for this but I'm just choosing to use this medium brush. And then I think that looks pretty good. I might blend this in just a little bit more, maybe add a touch more brown on here. And you could have it as brown as you want. Maybe you want yours lighter, so you add a little bit more lightness to it. But if you can keep that bottom edge nice and dark, that's gonna give um, a really good depth perception and all kinds of texture on, on your branch. And then when you're all done with this step, we are going to be changing brushes to our small brush. So you can put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush, get a bite of your cookie and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting the eyes for all of our little mysterious creatures that are hiding out in the jungle. So I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm going to be using red, yellow, green and white for um, the various sets of eyes that I'm doing. And you can really use any paint color combination as long as it's lighter than the background that you're gonna be putting it on. Um, and the reason why you can use any color combination is because there are hundreds, if not thousands, of different creatures and critters and stuff that live in the jungle. There's snakes and lizards and caimans, little tiny cucumbers. those live out there too. There's, I, I don't know, spiders, big huge spiders, and panthers, and there's even, I think, well, not I think, I know, the, the highest population of critters in the jungle, at least from what I saw, was monkeys. <laughs> and I tell you, I don't know if they're just super comfortable with, with humans or something, or maybe the place that I went to sees a lot of humans, but the monkeys, I saw they were so comfortable with, with us people, they would actually eat out of your hands. They live in this wild jungle and they'll come right up to you and eat out of your hand. They'll climb on your shoulder, they'll walk down the path with you. So I might, I might not put monkeys in my painting because I'm afraid it might come and eat my cookies, but you can put a monkey in your painting if you want to. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it with a really easy paint stroke. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do my first one with yellow, red, and just a teeny tiny bit of white. I don't want a lot. I want this to be kind of subtle. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do two U's next to each other. I'm going to pick dark areas to paint them in. My first one's going to be kind of up here and I'm going to do it sideways. So I'm going to do one 
you like that. And then I'm going to do another one. You could have yours more squinty if you wanted to, but I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint and I'm going to put a little tiny bit of a sparkle in the eye. You could do a dot, you could do a dash, whatever you want. Then I'm going to go on to my next set of eyes. So for me, I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up some green and yellow. I think I'm going to do, uh, let's do these ones up here. And these ones, maybe these ones are going to be a little bit bigger. And again, I'm just kind of using that U type, almost like a horseshoe kind of shape. I'm putting them near each other. Maybe these ones are a little bit bigger than the first one I did. And then I'm going to take and pick up a tiny bit of white paint on my brush. And I'm going to do just a little bit of a sparkle, like it's being lit up by something. I don't know what. And then I think I'm just going to pick up maybe some red. Didn't wash my brush. I'm going to do another set of them down here. Maybe these ones, maybe these ones are underneath this little piece right here. Just kind of hiding out, hiding out, kind of looking at the parrot saying, hmm, what are you doing over there? I'm going to go pick up a tiny bit of white paint. And then we have one little step to do after this and it's going to be with the small brush so once you've got all of your really cool eyes in your in your force you could i put three sets you could certainly put more than that but i'm just putting three sets um we are going to use this small brush for the next step so you can wash and dry it and get ready for the next step all right so we've got our one little detail left to go and it's putting the claw or the foot or the talon or the nails or the toes, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna make it so the bird has something to hold on to the branch with. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black and white paint. So I'm gonna start with just black paint on my brush. And really all I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go from um, where the leg meets the branch. I'm gonna put a little bit of black paint and make a little curled line that goes into my branch a little bit just like that and I'm still using just black paint and I'm going to make a little black line here and bring it just over it doesn't even have to it's the other one is on the other side of the branch so I'm just putting black paint to give the illusion that the rest of the claw is on the other side and then I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel and picking up a little bit of white and I'm going to put a white line on top of the, the back claw and what's going to be the front claw. So a little bit of white paint and just a little white line like that. It makes it look a little three dimensional. And then I'm doing the same thing over here with just a tiny bit of white paint and that's all I'm going to do. So we have to finish our painting with a tiny step that's going to be with the small brush. So wash and dry the small brush one more time and get ready for the last step. All right, so the last step to any painting is to sign it. So I am using my small brush. I'm going to use black paint, but you could use any pink color you want. You could use red or yellow or whatever you want. I'm going to sign mine in the bottom left hand corner. I use my initials but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a fun symbol. You could sign it in the branch if you wanted to. Whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you enjoyed your delicious cookies. I hope you love your painting. And I look forward to painting and eating cookies with you again sometime.